CSS has different types of selectors. Let's open our text editor and browser and look at the type selectors first. Type selectors refer to HTML elements within the page. Here's the HTML generating the page. You can see the H1 and H2 headers, paragraphs and a list. Now let's look at the CSS. If we want to turn the first H1 tag blue, we change the color to blue and refresh the page. So, type selectors, select all the elements of a certain type of HTML tag, like div, spans, headings, paragraphs, and a visible HTML element. Sometimes you want to apply the same CSS styling to different elements. So instead of writing them all out like this, H1, then H2, then H3, you can use what it's called the multiple selector. Add a list to all of the elements you want to style, separated by commas. So H1, comma, H2, comma, H3, and then give them all the same color. If you want to write a comment in your CSS, you can do it like this. Forward, slash, asterisk, your comment, asterisk, forward, slash. Comments are great to remind you of what you are thinking or to tell other people what you are thinking. Type selectors are the most basic and they change all the HTML tags of a certain type. What if you want to change just one tag? That's where the classes come in. Classes are a group of CSS properties that can be applied to any tag. To use a class, you have to add the class attribute to an HTML element, and then the corresponding class and styles can be added to your style sheet. In the style sheet, a class will have a period before the name to identify it as a class. Let's open the text editor and do an example by adding a class, highlight, to change the background color to a paragraph to yellow. Just add the class attribute to the paragraph element you want to highlight and then add the highlight class to the CSS style sheet. Now the paragraph specified will have a yellow background. Classes can be defined differently for different tags, like paragraph, dot, highlight, or h1, dot, highlight. You can add the class to as many HTML elements as you wish. Classes are polygons, full of women. like Mormons. Uh, of women. One too many. Bind, bind, binders full of, uh, of women. Binders, 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 binders. IDs are another type of selector. They work like classes, except there can be only one ID per page, like the Highland. In the end, can be one use one. of IDs is for page layout. For example, if you want a div element to be the footer of the page, we can add an ID of a footer to this bottom div. Now let's add a width and a height to a footer and a gray background in a CSS. Since we have a footer, we can wrap the rest of the HTML in a div tag with an ID of content. Next are contextual selectors. So you want to style paragraphs in the footer differently from paragraphs in the content. We would use the descendant selector, or more simply, a space. It reads, pound, footer, space, paragraph, and another selector that reads pound, content, space, paragraph. Now we can add a background color for the paragraphs in our content and a border for the footer paragraph. Last are pseudoclasses. These select specific states of an element with the addition of a column. Most commonly, these are used for links with four possibilities. Link, visited, hour, and active. The four pseudoclasses should be used in this order so they don't interfere with each other. Link is for things that have not been clicked and can usually be omitted. Visited is for links that have been clicked before. Hover is what happens when your mouse hovers over the link. And active is the link state while it's being clicked. Let's add some links to our HTML. Remove the underline and change the color. Open up your text editor. First, let's add two external links to our HTML. One to Google and one to Reddit. So let's check out our HTML with these links added. You can see the links are underlined and if they're inside a paragraph, they inherit the paragraph's color. This parent-child inheritance is a big part of CSS. Let's move over to the CSS. We can add a type selector for the anchor tag and give it the bigger text size. We all know bigger is better. Then let's set the style for the default link state and a visited link state. Okay, 
Now we can add a style for when you hover over the link and when the link is the, in the process of being clicked. Save the CSS changes and take a look. As you can see, the links reflect these styles changes. They are no longer underlined and the color changes on hover and when you click. And we have a funny looking website. Sweet! Okay, go past the quiz and I have a bonus for you. Okay.